So today I'm here to talk to you about the first three X-Men movies. Why I'm talking about those? Because I bought them recently on 4K, and I remember liking all three of them, including the third one. And now I'm starting to notice things that I didn't notice before when I watched them the first and maybe second time. So, here's some things about the X-Men movies you probably don't remember, but probably want to know. So, the first movie, great effects, um, great acting, great casting. The funny thing is, uh, Logan, or James Howlett, Wolverine, is supposed to be like 5'2 or 5'3 in the comics. In the movies, Hugh Jackman is like 6'1 or something like that. So, that right there was a thing that a lot of the comic book people were very much against because he was so tall. But Hugh Jackman knocks that role out of the park. Knocks it out of the park. He's great. They did actually a great job. Like, Patrick Stewart would have been the first choice for Professor X if I was going to make an X-Men movie. He's great. Ian McKellen is great, too. But, like, if you look at what Magneto was in the comics compared to the movies, he was an old guy with a six-pack, but you're probably not going to get that. So, I get what they were trying to do with that. But the first movie, still good. It doesn't quite hold up to this day. Some of the dialogue is really bad, and the acting is kind of uneven, but it's still good. I gave that one a 3.5 out of 5. Uh, and now X2. X2. Still a great movie. Still great effects. It still holds up to this day. It's got character development. It's got new mutants. It's a bigger story. Bigger plot. Wolverine, again, is the top guy in the movies. Um because he was really popular in the 90s, he was popular in the 80s. He's a very popular character. He's in the Deadpool universe. All that. But that's obviously not addressed in the older movies because reasons. I'm not going to get into it right now. But X2, X-Men United, if you haven't seen it, check it out. It's great. Pro arguably the best X-Men movie, but I'm really also leaning towards Days of Future Past. But then after Days of Future Past happens, the rest of the sequels happen, and they shouldn't have happened. So, I'm just gonna say X2 is the best X-Men movie. And now we get to X3. So, there's this overarching theme for the first three X-Men movies. There's a Jean Grey, Cyclops, and Wolverine overarching romance. Now, this romance actually doesn't make a lot of sense in the continuity of the movies. Because why does Wolverine love Jean Grey? Why? It doesn't make any sense. Because he was the first person she's she was the first person he saw when he woke up in the first movie? Is it because of in X-Men Apocalypse she was the one that saved him? Nothing's ever explained. It's just there's a love triangle and all three movies and that's a thing. It makes no sense at all to the continuity of the story but in the third movie he finally proclaims that he spoilers, that he loves her, but you're not exactly sure why. Like, she turns him down at every chance. She proclaims her love to Scott more than once. But yet, Wolverine still pursues her, even though maybe he doesn't obviously doesn't remember because in the movies he has amnesia, and in the comics he probably had amnesia and uh, he doesn't remember so I guess he's just going for the most current woman that's there but she obviously doesn't feel the same way until the third movie when she decides to fuck with him because she's a phoenix now and there's just I liked the third movie a lot when it came out 
I saw it in theaters. I'm a huge X-Men fan. I haven't read a lot of X-Men comics, I'm not gonna lie. I watched the cartoon series when I was a kid. I read a few X-Men comics, but I've seen all the X-Men movies. Not that it makes me an expert, obviously. But I've seen all of the X-Men movies, and the third one now? Oh, it's just not... It's so uneven. I mean, there's a mutant cure in it. Um, I think that was in the comics, too. Don't get me... Don't... I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I think that was in the comics, too. But it was done differently, and Juggernaut's completely fucking ruined in it. Juggernaut isn't great until Deadpool 2. Um, I like the actor that plays the Juggernaut in X-Men 3, but he's not a Juggernaut. One, Juggernaut's not British. There's a whole backstory with Juggernaut and Professor X, and it's not mentioned in this movie. Warren Worthington has a super small part, and then just happens to be at the end of the movie just for sentimental reasons. Um, but... One of the best things about X3 has to be Kelsey Grammer cast as Hank McCoy. Again, if I was making an X-Men movie, he would be my beast. If I was going to make one. And he has he was in This Future Past as a cameo, as he should have been, because he's freaking perfect. Nothing against the guy that played him in the earlier movies. I'm sorry, I can't remember his name right now. But, Kelsey Grammer, great in X3. He's actually mentioned in uh, X1 or X2, but he's like on TV. And it's like the human version of Hank McCoy. And he's talking about the mutant problem, but Kelsey Grammer just knocks it out of the park. And you got Ellen Page that's there. Shadow Cat's in the other movies, but she's never named, and so she's played by like three different people in three different movies. There's there's a cameo in the first movie and the second movie of Shadow Cat. And then the third movie, she's a real X-Men. But then, it's played by Ellen Page. So I guess you have to name them. Colossus is played by the same person as played by the second movie. Obviously, the Deadpool movies is different. But anyway, overall, the trilogy, while it's broken and messed up, I mean, the rest of the X-Men movies, I'll get to those later. They're broken and messed up, too. Not that they... Anyway. I'll get into that later. But, the X-Men movies, um, I'll give, overall, for the first three, a 3.5 out of 5. Uh, with the main movie, the main good one being X-Men 2, X-Men United, with a 4. Number 1... 3.5. Number two is a four is a 4.5. I think I just said four. It's a 4.5. And then, I obviously don't write this this stuff. And X-Men 3, I'm gonna give a three. Just because it's so broken. I remember liking the movie a lot more than I did when I watched it recently. But I do gotta say that the 4K format looks great it's not as good as other 4k films that I've seen that I've turned to 4k but it still looks good so I mean 3.5 isn't bad so just check those movies out I'll get to the rest of the X movies later maybe not um Dark Phoenix that's on my channel earlier I reviewed it But anyway, uh, that's my X-Men 1 through 3 review. Correction. Sh sorry. Shadowcat is in four movies. She's got cameos in the first two. Uh, lead role in the third 
movie, and then in the fourth movie, she also has a small, I guess you could say sort of leading correction. Sh sorry, Shadow Cat is in four movies. She's got cameos in the first two, a uh, lead role in the third movie, and then in the fourth movie, she also has 